Hello everyone, here you can see a lesson of my tutorial Anatomy and Ultrasound of the Shoulder. In this case, we will talk about the bursing. The first part will be the anatomy and the second one will be the ultrasound. All the content will be located at mscapefreak.com very soon. So let's start with the bursing. I hope you like it. Now we are going to take a look at the anatomy of the bursi. Okay? And uh, this is uh, quite difficult to, to understand because there are several uh, variations and there is controversy about the names of the bursa, the amount of bursi in the shoulder and the extent of, of this bursi. Okay? So because of these anatomical variations, a lot of controversy. We will talk about the subacromial bursa, subdeltoid bursa, the subacromial subdeltoid bursa, which is the fusion between the, two, the former and the second one. The subcoracoid bursa is um, not sure that it's a real bursa at the, the subcoracoid space, but uh, usually people think about this bursa. Uh, the coracoracoid bursa is a very clear one. And finally, the subscapular uh, bursa, uh, again with controversy, because some say that this, this is the recess, an anterior recess of the glenohumeral joint. So let's go into the subacromial subdeltoid bursa. Usually the subacromial bursa fuses with the subdeltoid bursa in 70% of the people. So it's more appropriate to talk about the subacromial subdeltoid bursa. It, it, this bursa has a huge anatomical variation in terms of extent. We can say that it has a roof attachment to the acromion, coracocoracromial acromion ligament, and deep fascia of the deltoid muscle. And this is very interesting because when we perform injection in the bursa, we will take the reference of this deep fascia of the deltoid muscle and we will be sure we are inside the bursa. The floor will be the supraspinatus, the floor uh, attachments will be at the supraspinatus and the greater tubercle. It covers anteriorly the long head of the biceps pulley and the upper suprascapularis at this level. Laterally, it covers the greater tuberosity and has a pouch here. Okay? And it's important to know it because sometimes you will find liquid at this, at this side, at this place, and not in the subacromial space. So always check this space here, this pouch, when we suspect a bursitis. Posteriorly, this bursa will cover the cranial part or the infraspinatus muscle. As you can see, a huge bursa yeah, covering all the subacromial space. What about the coracobrachial bursa? The coracobrachial bursa has a, a variable anatomy and names. Okay? The most common name is the coracobrachial bursa. It will be located inferior to the coracoid process. So this is the coracoid process and this bursa will be inferior to the coracoid process. Okay? And deep to the coracobrachialis muscle. Okay? You can see here with the coracobrachialis muscle and the short head of the biceps and is deep to this both this, this both these two structures, sorry. And superficial to the subscapularis. Usually it's a se separate pouch. Okay? There's no joint communication. Okay? And sometimes it fuses with the subacromial pseudotoid bursa. So if you see the subacromial pseudotoid bursa going deep to the coracobrachialis is the fusion between this um, both bursae. In normal conditions, there is no fusion inside, there's no liquid. So you, usually uh, you shouldn't see this bursa. Okay? If you find this bursa, it's because this is pathologic. What about the subcoracoid bursa? The subcoracoid bursa is located deep to the coracoid process. The coracobrachialis bursa is inferior to the coracoid process but the subcoracoid bursa is deep to this coracoid process. Okay. The second particularity is it's cranial to the subscapularis. Okay? The coracoid bursa is anterior to the subscapularis, but this one is cranial to the subscapularis.
is in inconstant. In only we will find this bursa only in the 31% of the patients, and may connect with the subacromial sudator bursa laterally or with the subscapularis bursa medially. Sometimes it, it may connect with the glenohumeral capsule, and that's why something that there is a recess. And finally, the subscapular bursa. The subscapular bursa is deep to the subscapularis tendon. So this is the subscapular muscle, and this is the subscapular bursa. It's superficial to the scapular neck and the glenohumeral capsule. In 74 and 96% of the cases, it will be a communication between the glenohumeral joint and this bursa. That's why some people say that this is a recess, a recess between the, media, the middle glenohumeral ligament and the superior glenohumeral ligament. And a lot of people think about this bursa as an re anterior recess. There is usually a small amount of diffusion could be normal, so maybe not pathologic. And may extend superiorly and fuse with the subcoracoid bursa. Okay? So sometimes you will see the fusion between the subcoracoid bursa and the subscapular bursa. Okay. Remember, the coracobrachial bursa will be between the coracobrachialis and uh, anterior to the subscapularis. The subcoracoid deep to the coracoid process and above cranial to the subscapularis and the subscapular bursa deep to the subscapularis and maybe a recess, anterior recess of the glenohumeral joint. I hope this helped you to understand this bursae, okay? And let's move to the ultrasound of these structures.